Hello and a warm welcome back to the Sweet Spot here on the Racing Post, your go-to golf tipping show. No Bruce Millington this week, so it's Jack Reeve joined alongside Racing Post's top golf tipster, Steve Palmer. Steve, you're looking remarkably patriotic. The last time I saw you was on the golf course. It, it was reminiscent of a, an informed Jordan Spieth, the way you were gadding about the course. <laughs> That's right, yeah. Gave you guys a good thrashing at Silvermere. And then, uh, yeah, had a very active week off, actually. Went to the Tank Museum. Um, that was the early highlight. Uh, loved looking at tanks. Took the families to see some tanks. So uh, that was good. Um, and then the end of the week highlight was probably the, uh, the Harry and Meghan's baby. Did you see what they named that? Lilibet, yeah. Lilibet, yeah, yeah. I, I thought that was fantastic. I mean, uh, the American betting industry is about to take off, isn't it? And I think uh, Lilibet bookmakers could uh, play a major role in that in a few years' time. So, uh, yeah, an interesting, uh, an interesting week off. But, uh, yeah, pleased to be back. Yeah, looking forward to the Euros. Uh, this is not purely about football. I'm tipping a few Englishmen this week in the golf, so... I thought it was an appropriate garment. I see. Yeah, the Lily Bet. It, it does feel like it could almost. It wouldn't look out of place on like a, a Burnley home shirt, would it? You know, <laughs> kind of an Asian uh, betting firm. Um, we we talk in, in in sport, Steve. You know, people having rest and recovery and such. Was that your week off, or was it was it full on? Well, it was half term, Jack. It's half term. You won't know about the rigours of half term yet, but uh, when you have children, you will. Uh, yeah, yeah, you don't get much peace. But uh, yeah, yeah, no, I'm keen to get back into it. I'm really looking forward to the US Open next week. Um, you know, we'll save our main ammunition for that. But uh, we've got a couple of tricky tournaments this week at new venues. But um, yeah, hopefully we can uh, get some more US Open ammunition with some winners this week. Absolutely. We'll be taking a look at this week's tournament shortly. Let's take a look back at what we've just witnessed, though. And it was a unique week in, in many ways. We had the Memorial Tournament and also uh, the European Open. Now, the Memorial Tournament, Steve, um, I suspect was an interesting one for many punters. It was led off the 54 holes uh, convincingly by John Rahm, a six-shot lead, walking off the 18th of his third round, then to be told that he tested positive for COVID, an absolute disaster for Ram. Yeah, he almost fell over, didn't he? he doubled over when he when he found out the news. I think there was, you know, he, he was told earlier in the week that he might have been in contact with someone. You know, the contact tracing had given him a clue that he might be in trouble. Um, but he played, you know, his best golf of the year by some distance. It was it was it was sublime, wasn't it? The uh, you know, it, it did look all over the way he was playing. Um, and then uh, yeah, then COVID reared his ugly head. I mean, in twenty five years of, of golf betting. I've never managed to back two winners in the same tournament, but there, I'm sure there would have been a few punters last week who did that. I mean, get on the comment section uh, of this uh, this podcast if you did, because uh, you know two well fancy runners. You know, all the bookmakers paid out on Ram. That's what I'm, I'm getting at. Um, all the bookmakers paid out on Ram um, because it, yeah, he looks so certain to win. Yeah, it would have been too harsh on the on the punting community to um, to not pay out on Ram. So you had Ram and Cartley. You could easily have had two winners in one tournament. I've never done that, and uh, well done to anyone who did. And I'm right in saying, though, if you backed um, Ram on the exchange, you wouldn't have been paid out that way. Because I saw a few very uh, tough kind of stories on Twitter of people who had significant sums of money, um, yeah. you know, ready to be paid out of Ram. But it was on the exchange. Well, yeah, the exchange is the, the, the fly on the ointment there, isn't it? But the, obviously the, the Ram backers had a, had a field day. Uh, on the exchanges so um yeah just uh, yeah it's a brutal we need covid to go now don't we we can't we can't have you know golf betting's tough enough without having covid thrown out if you've backed around last week on the exchanges I, I i feel for you I, you know that you must be hurting but um yeah a dramatic week and uh, and john Rahm, of course we must mention has now got a quarantine for uh for 10 days and he's only going to get one practice round at uh, Tory Pines before the US Open. I mean, the flip side of that is he'll be fresh as a daisy, but um, far from ideal because he was a huge runner for that. He's got a great record at Tory Pines. Absolutely, um, yeah. yeah. Tough, tough on Ram, Steve. But we, we must mention Patrick Cantlay, who was tipped up by your esteemed colleague, Joe Champion, on last week's episode of The Sweet Spot. So hopefully a few of you managed to get on Cantlay. But a, a brilliant win for a man who uh, is always there or thereabouts. <laughs> Absolutely. No, I do feel like an imposter coming in here. You know, the, the, the listeners want to hear from Champion the Wonder Horse, and, uh, and, and so do I. You can get his tips in the Racing and Football Outlook, remember. So, um, uh, so get them. Yeah, no, great tip. For, please, please for Joe. Lovely lad. 
Um, and Cartley, not not as pleased for Cartley, not one of my favourites. You know, sort of a dour character. You know, and yeah, he's hard to like. Is uh, is Patrick Cartley? But um, uh, yeah, he's, he's a US Open runner now. He's settled in the market about twenty five to one. That, yeah, that's the that's the major that um, he's probably best suited to. Um, so uh, yeah, we'll worry about that tournament next week. But uh, yeah, yeah, we, we've got we've got two 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 tricky ones to focus on first. Yeah, absolutely. And, and a quick mention uh, of the European Open. I, I, I doubt it was uh, on too many people's televisions. It was a strange one, wasn't it? It started on the Saturday, 54 holes, went into the Monday, but won by Marcus Armitage. And I'm sure uh, a lot of people have seen the the post-round interview. Very touching. It was a, a beautiful moment. If you haven't seen it, I'd, I'd certainly recommend that you can find it on, on, on Twitter and, and such. But uh, the context was, Steve, that, uh, that Marcus had lost his mother a, a while back uh, and this was his first European Tour win and, and clearly very emotional. Yeah, you had two contrasting tournaments because you had the Memorial, which was a triumph for the punters. You know, lots of fancied runners doing well there. Uh, can't they beat Morikawa? The complete opposite in the in the European Open, you know, outsiders dominating. But it was another feel-good story, wasn't it? I mean, I, I don't want to annoy listeners. They're probably getting fed up with my feel-good stories because feel-good stories don't uh, pay the bills. You know, <laughs> nothing feels gooder than a winning bet, uh, if, if we're honest. But, you know, we had Richard Bland winning the uh, you know his first event a couple of weeks ago. And then, uh, yeah, then you had Marcus Armitage. Yeah, you, you've got to have a heart of stone not to enjoy that. Uh, regardless of betting, I mean, yeah, he's a lovely lad. In he's, um, yeah, you know, he's had a difficult backstory. You know, he's he lost his mum, as you say. Small drug, yeah, you know, briefly had a drug addiction, I believe. Left school, you know, no interest in school. Threw himself into golf as a, you know, escape from all his troubles. And finally, after twenty years of toil, he's a he's a champion. Yeah, it, it was it was hard not to watch that uh, that interview and well up, wasn't it? Yeah, definitely. I, I did read somewhere that when he was kind of um, competing for his his card early on in his career, he was sleeping in a tent up and down. Yeah. Imagine having your clubs in the tent. I mean, tents are small enough as it is. That's it. Yeah. No, his mate, get, his mate gave him a little bit of money even to play in that tournament. Yeah, he need, needed some some backing from his mate to get to that tournament. Uh, now it's all come good, and I thought the interview with his uh, his uh, I don't know his wife or his girlfriend was fantastic. You see the Zoom interview with that, where uh, he he had to cut it short because he was bursting for the toilet, and she was quite happy with that because she wanted to go and get some crumpets. I loved how crumpets got a mention on the on the interview. I, I'm a big fan of crumpets. Whenever the crumpets are mentioned, I uh, is, I is it just butter for you on your crumpets, or are you putting uh, jam on there? Are you going savoury? Maybe some marmite. Marmite goes well in here. Uh, loads of butter, loads of marmite. But I, I, I love putting on my best sort of uh, Yorkshire accent when the crumpets come out. And uh, whenever the, the wife mentions this crumpets, I go, did, did somebody say crumpets? Oh, butter me crumpets, darling. But, yeah, I, I just can't get enough of that. Sorry, I've gone off message again. But no, yeah, yeah. No. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well done, Marcus Armitage. Well done, crumpets. Yeah, in, in, quite right. Well done to, to Cartley, Armitage and uh, anyone out there eating eating their crumpets this morning. Right, let's take a look at the upcoming tournaments this week then. Let's start on the PGA Tour with the Palmetto Championship. Um, let's have a quick look at the top of the market. Dustin Johnson, 8-1. to one, Brooks Kepka at 9s. Hatton, 14-1. to one, Fitzpatrick, 18-1. to one, Sungjae Im, 20-1. to one, Fleetwood, 25-1. to one. Some, some well-known names at the top there. Uh, Steve, give us a rundown. The course... And how many tips do you have? The course, the Congaree Golf Club in Ridgeland, South Carolina, 7,655 yards, par 71. Tom Fazio design, which only opened in 2017. Very new course. Uh, supposed to be the Canadian Open this week, being cancelled for the second consecutive year. Issues on the US-Canada border uh, with the old COVID. Um, so we've got the inaugural Palmetto Championship instead. This is our third event in South Carolina in as many months. We had the RBC Heritage in April, USPG Championship uh, last month. Uh, Fazio has said this is like a low country version of Shadow Creek, his uh, his Las Vegas track. Shadow Creek hosted the CJ Cup in October. Uh, and, and others have, have likened Congaree to the Australian sand belt courses. This course is built on sand. Yeah, very sharp edges to the fairways, flanked by waste areas, firm, fast terrain. Yeah, it looks a magnificent course. I'm, I'm pleased it's uh, been introduced to the PJ Tour. And uh, yeah, I've got three tips. Just the three. Take us away with your main tip. Uh, the main tip first, I've got to get a little prop out for the main tip. Been, been gagging to get this hat on. <laughs> Here we go. And now I've discovered it doesn't go over the headphones. I should have prepared that. Um, yeah, th this is a gift from the legendary reader, John Owen from Formby. Um, 
when we had both winners in the penultimate week of January. Do you remember when we had Tyrrell Atten in Abu Dhabi and, and Si Wu? Yeah, yeah, oh. that was a glorious week. So he, he sent a gift as a, a you know, typically great gesture from John Owen from Formby. You know, I haven't had the chance to to put it on because I haven't, you know, I haven't tipped Tyrrell Hatton in the last few months. His form dipped a little. I'll just rest it for a second because I don't think I can hold that for much You're balancing that it's, superbly. <laughs> it, Hatton's form has dipped a bit and then he went off my radar. So I didn't get a chance to get this hat on. Um, but I think this is the week that, that Hatton nails his second victory of the year. Finally follows up on that Abu Dhabi one. Uh, it's going to be very hot and sunny in South Carolina this week. This is a firm and fast track. It's got lots of runoff areas around the greens. So I think scrambling ability is going to be a key attribute this week. Uh, Hatton traditionally thrives in that department. Statistically, he's dipped a little bit this year, but over the years, he's been one of the best in the business. Uh, his approach play, uh, I think that's the other department which is important this week. Uh, very, very, very difficult greens to hold, these at Congaree, and finding the right sections of them is important. Hatton is uh, uh, 11th in strokes gained on approach from the PGA Tour this season. He was fourth for that stat last season. So I think Hatton's got all the tools for this track. And on, a, on that Tom Fazio design in October that we mentioned, the CJ Cup Shadow Creek, Hatton finished in third place. Um, and the two players that uh, finished ahead of him aren't playing this week. So I like Hatton's suitability for the course. And I think he's just bubbling nicely back into form. He had his best ever Masters finish in April. He got a terrible record in the Masters. He finished 18th there, closed with a 68. Uh, he got married at the end of the last month. I think he's, he's getting his mojo back now, Hatton. Um, and I don't like the market leaders ahead of him. So I think, yeah, I think Hatton at 14 to 1 is a very solid bet. Go on then, put the hat on once more. Yeah, I'll get these up. Yeah, take the headphone off. There we go. Haven't you got a song that complements this prop? I, rem I remember when you backed... Oh, you can't hear me, can I? <laughs> <laughs> there we go. I heard you say I, I can't hear you. I was just... talking away there, Steve. <laughs> what did forgotten. you call me? What did you call me? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, didn't you used to have a song that complemented the hat? A song? Complimented you? that hat. It's yeah, a horse racing hat. It's sort of Royal Ascot style hat, isn't it? Yeah, no, it's um, lovely. There we go. Yeah, there we go. There we go. No, no. I, uh, hopefully, Hatton wins, and we can put the hat on again next week. Um, but oh. um, yeah, yeah. It's time Hatton got got going again. I mean, he's he's, just, he's not been playing badly. He's not been playing, just not been playing great. Um, but I think he's found a course this week and a, and a field. And you know, there's there's not a lot to beat this week. I think I think his time's come. Yeah, it felt, didn't it, after that final round in, in the Middle East where he won and, and battled so beautifully against Rory McIlroy that he'd kick on, but it never quite came. Tyrrell Hatton, the main tip for Steve Palmer this week. Who's up next? The next best is Keith Mitchell. Uh, we've been following him a lot lately, pretty much ever since he was the standout performer in the Zurich Classic Pairs event. He was brilliant in that. Carry Brandt Snedek in the fourth place. He's found his swing in the last few months, uh, striking his ball with real authority. And he finished third in the Wells Fargo Championship a month ago. Uh, the Wells Fargo is played at a Tom Fazio redesign. And Mitchell's only PGA Tour victory came on a Tom Fazio design in the 2019 Honda Classic. So I see Keith Mitchell falling in love with, with Congaree this week. Uh, he went to college in Georgia, neighbouring state of South Carolina. Still lives there. I think he's a big runner in what, well, as I say, is a humdrum field. He just missed out on US Open qualification yesterday, Monday. Uh, finished one shot shy of a player from the Georgia qualifier. I think he avenges that with a big performance in, in the Palmetto. 50 to 1, Keith Mitchell. Keith Mitchell at 50. So that's the second of three. What's your final tip for the, the Palmetto Championship, Steve? The final tip is Bryson Nimmer. Uh, I got a lot of abuse for, for putting up Bryson Nimmer at 500 to 1 for the RBC Heritage because he opened with an 80. Uh, and, and the vulture circle, but uh, he followed that with a 68. Only 25 players in the field better, bettered his second round score. Uh, and I can forgive that, that opening 80. He was under a loads of pressure. He, you know, this rising star from South Carolina playing in his home state. He had to do a pre-tournament media conference, which went on for 25 minutes. He, you know, he, he couldn't believe the amount of interest in him. Then he had a massive gallery following him for that first round. And um, he was in the last group out. He was in the final three ball. So he's had all day thinking about this. And his first shot went in the water. So, um, yeah, yeah, he's just, he just buckled under the pressure on that first day. Completely understandable, massively inexperienced. But he showed what he was capable of in that Friday 68. He, he, was, he was great then. And the reasons for backing him then are the same as they are now. He's been really impressive in the lower grades. He's a local lad who knows this course better than most of the field. And since the Heritage, he's had a couple of decent performances on the Corn Ferry Tour. So, He's getting more experience. He's only been a pro since 2019. But 400 to 1, uh, getting as many places as you can. I, I'm going to keep the faith with Bryson Nimmer. I think he's got potential. And I think um, you know, he, he could be a home state runner this week.
You're a forgiving man, aren't you, Steve? I think if, if anyone else backs someone that shoots an 80 first day, that the bet slips would be torn up and, and never going back in. But you're, you're a lover, not a hater. Well, he played he played like a 500 to one chance in that first round. Yeah, you, 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 you tip a 33 to one chance and they and they buckle and the vultures don't come out. But now I, I, I'm prepared to get um, devoured again this week. But I, I think it's worth trying. There's loads of places out there. Get as many places as you can. Get a big price on Bryson Nimmo. Yeah, absolutely. As always with your golf betting, not only the best price, but look out for the best each way terms. That's the Palmetto Championship. We'll recap all of Steve's bets at the end of the show. Let's move on to the European Tour and a slightly different uh, tournament this week. It's the Scandinavian Mixed uh, Tournament at Valder Golf uh, and Country Club. Steve, run us through uh, this tournament and, and how it's different. Yep, yeah, we're at Valder Golf and Country Club, Gothenburg, Sweden. And we've got two sets of tees. We've got to concentrate on here because uh, the ladies are going off the ladies' tees, uh, 6,138 yards. The men's are going off the men's tees, obviously 7,060 yards. Uh, so uh, there's a 922-yard advantage for the ladies. 78 men playing, 78 women playing. This course, again, yeah, both these courses are new. They both look fantastically interesting. This is a, a Martin Hawtrey design, a, 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 a British link-style layout. Opened in 2009. It's a very flat heathland track, wide fairways, fast running terrain. The sun has been out and it's going to play really short. So it's the perfect venue really to bring uh, the, the men and women together. The last time we had an event like this was on the Challenge Tour in 2019, the Jordan Mixed Open, uh, where it's the same scenario, ladies tees, men's tees, uh, and uh, only one woman finished in the top 15. Um, so... Um, yeah, we must take note of that. I don't think 922 yards is going to be enough of an advantage for the women uh, to level the playing field enough. You know, that's an average of 50 yards per hole, roughly. Um, but there are four par fives on this course. So if they're hitting their second shots from the same spot, the men and the women, that's where the men should take control, coming in with um, you know shorter clubs to the par fives. You know, I, I don't want to be accused of sexism here, uh, uh, Jack. You know, I'm as, I'm as feminist as the next man. But... <laughs> I do think that uh, the punters should concentrate on the men this week. I've got four yeah. four tips, and they're all they're all males. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you, you look at these championship courses, Steve, and they are brutally long, aren't they? So if you're if you're losing out on the tee, it's going to become increasingly difficult. Just looking at the market, there's not a female um, that's shorter than about twenty eight to one. So top of the market, Sam Horsfield's your favourite of fourteens. Uh, used Lloyd to the eighteens. Screw from her eighteens. Alexander Bjork at 20 to 1, at Samuja at 20 to 1. Steve, not the strongest of fields. Uh, how many tips for this tournament? Four! Oh, I was waiting for that. I'm so glad. Is that why you've got a bit of a hoarse throat? No, my voice has only just come back, actually. I was concerned it wasn't coming back. I lost my voice um, just after I played golf with you guys. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I don't know what happened. Bit of, yeah, the hay fever season's come on and, um, you know, just wear and tear. So I was concerned it wasn't going to come back. I've been very husky the last few last um my mother-in-law said how sexy my voice was uh, <laughs> so i um you know i'm bringing a bit of sexiness to proceedings but yeah i'm, I'm just pleased to be able to talk yeah um, to take I do any compliment you can get steve absolutely uh four <laughs> tips who's the main one the main one and i know you're a massive fan and uh, you mentioned him there and we've only got one show as as we speak there's only one firm up with betting uh, well done for Bet365 for taking the plunge. You know, I, I hate the way the bookmakers get all sort of nervous and um, you know, tentative when uh, a tournament comes along. It's a bit different. You know, okay, have, the, have, the, have the balls to, to get, issue a show. We all know the, the format. We all know the details. Get your prices out there. I think they will trickle through by the time the, 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 our podcast is issued. Hopefully, there'll be more, more, more available. But on the one show we've got at the moment, it's 14 to 1 horse best price. I think they will. I think you might squeeze a little bit better. I don't know. Um, Sam Horsford is your man, Jack. Uh, I think he's the best player in this field. I think he's got the potential to destroy this course. It's open, flat. The sun's out all week. He likes the sun on his back. No wind expected. Horsfield is a birdie machine. I think he's going to go on absolute tear. Um, he finished fifth in the 2018 British Masters at Walton Heath. That's, you know, he's got a bit of Heathland form in the book. Uh, he won twice on the European Tour last summer. Then he got that back injury. Returned to action at the end of March this year. Really impressive first four events. 8-3-15-4 is form figures. He's not made an impact stateside. He's jetted over a couple of stateside events. But on the European Tour, big fish in a small pond. I think he turns into a ruddy shark this week, Jack. I think he's going to eat everything in his path. Men, women, children. Horsefield, you man. 
he's just such an exciting player. I know I've, whenever I've been on this show, I've spoken about Sam Horsfield. I think Ian Poulter it was, wasn't it, when, when Horsfield was breaking through in America as a junior, Poulter was all over Horsfield. He said, this is the next exciting talent. And as you say, a birdie machine. When he won at Celtic Manor last summer and you were on him there in the previous week, he, he's got this... Uh, tendency to just blow up and then just bounce back. His his tenacity is unbelievable. Sam Horsfield, Steve Palmer's main tip. Who are we going for next? And the next best is Ryan Fox, another powerhouse that can overwhelm this track. Fox loves Lynx golf. He's got a fantastic record in the Irish Open and the Scottish Open. This week's course is Lynxy. You've got the fast running fairways. You've got fesco, fescue grass line in the fairways. Very heavy bunkering. I can see Ryan Fox falling in love with it. And pandemic life has not been easy for him. I mean, he, he lives in New Zealand. Get, getting to the tournaments has been tough. And then lots of quarantine back home. Um, he's won a couple of events on the Charles Tour in New Zealand. That's New Zealand PGA circuit. Uh, in April, he won two tournaments in, in there. So he's been playing in a low grade and winning. Um, not had many European Tour events this year. Uh, but last week, he closed with a 69 for 11th spot in the Porsche European Open. So um, he's finally getting a little run of tournaments. Denmark, Ger Germany and then Sweden. I uh, see him finding a groove this week. A second European Tour title could be coming for Ron Fox. It's easy to overlook um, the kind of quarantining and the travel, isn't it? I mean, the golf tour in general is, is incredibly intense in normal times. In COVID times, it must be an absolute nightmare appearance. Yeah, absolutely. When you've got that much, and New Zealand have already very tough on their, you know, the reason New Zealand's been so successful against COVID is because, you know, border controls and quarantine and, you know, it's been difficult for Ryan Fox. But um, yeah, this is his third tournament uh, in as many weeks and I think he's, he's going to find a groove and I think the course suits. I think, yeah, Horsfield and Fox are, are by far the best options. Absolutely. So Horsfield and Fox at a third. And then we get a little bit more speculative. David Horsey. Uh, who is a four-time European Tour champion. And he carded a 61 in the first round on the Saudi International in February. He was on, massively on a 59 watch on a, on a, on a long course. Uh, he ended, ended up finishing 12th in, in the Saudi International, high-class tournament. Um, and in the last fortnight, there's been signs of life again. Finished 31st in Denmark and 25th last week in Germany. He had his first kid in, in, in April. Uh, became a father, so there's been an adjustment period, but it looks like he's got his game back in shape. He's always had a brilliant short game, which I, I think will count for a lot this week because the ground's so firm. Uh, yeah, don't be surprised to see Horsey uh, get over the winning post in front. Uh, and he's about 50 to 1. And then we've got one more biggest prize selection of the lot is uh, Joachim Lagergren. Um, playing at home could inspire Joachim Lager. And I, I wanted to get a Swede on my side. I think he could rediscover his sparkle. This course suits him. He's got a superb record in the uh, Dunhill Lynx Championship. He likes a, a Lynxy assignment. We've mentioned this is a, a Lynx-style Lynx track. Uh, his, his short game has traditionally been a great strength. He's got room off the tee. Can be a bit erratic, but there's plenty of room on, on this week's track. Um, and signs of life. I remember, he shot 63 in, in the Maiden Himmerland uh, the week before last. So, uh, yeah, if Largo Grand f finds his A game this week, 125 to 1 could be uh, you know, an enormous price. Yeah, big price. I'm going to let one of our Twitter commenters do my job uh, shortly. Uh, Steve Robb uh, tweeted in and said, Calais Samuya has to be value in the Scandinavian. Did you look at him or just wasn't on the shortlist? It's a bit early to say it has to be value. We've only got one firm up. I mean, he, you know, let, let's see what price he ends up at. Um, but yeah, Kelly Smooja was on the shortlist. But um, yeah, yeah, he, he's winless. Uh, and I'm not his biggest fan. Not entirely convinced by him. But um, yeah, this is a tournament that's not going to take much winning. I mean, yeah, you've got 156 players in the field. But, you know, again, without wishing to sound unkind, um, you, you, you could call this a 78 runner affair. You know, the 78 men. And, you know, and so if you're getting a 78, 78 runner affair with you know, standard each way terms, uh, and again, I'm, I'm waiting to see what's coming out. All we've seen so far is call to, call to the five from Bet365, which is what they, they normally do. Um, so if we can get some decent each way terms in, in what you could call a 78 runner affair, um, you know, I'll have a huge egg on my face when uh, Pedersen hoses up, but, um, you know, we shall see. But, um, yeah, I think... Um, yeah, I'm not going to put your man off uh, back in Samuja there because, as I say, I think this is a weak event. Yeah, two exciting tournaments in the in the Palmetto and the Scandinavian mix. Steve, just uh, run us through uh, all of your selections for this week. Yes, sir. What would you like first? Which we'll, go with, we'll go with the Palmetto first. We'll go with the Palmetto, where we have Tyrrell Hatton. You're getting good at that now. 
I'm, I'm not. I'm really not. These headphones have caused carnage. Keith Mitchell and Bryson Nimmer. And in the Scandinavian mixed. Samuel Horsfield, Ryan Fox, David Horsey. Giddy up, David Horsey. <laughs> and Joachim Lagergren. Brilliant stuff. Uh, let's have a quick look at some of the questions that were sent in via Twitter. We had Stu comment on YouTube last week, a regular comment. Hello, Stu. Uh, now, if you remember, Steve, you and Bruce uh, were speaking about Bryson and Brooks Kepka and the ongoing beef there. I mean, that's escalated, hasn't it? Stu said his ideal uh, third person in that three ball would be Patrick Reed. He'd be sure to ruffle a few more feathers. I like Stu. He, he's not going for the peacemaker. He just wants even more carnage. He does. Yeah, yeah he's right. No, that, that would stoke things up. I mean, there's a good chance of them being paired together in the, in the US Open, isn't there? Um, you know, everyone wants to see Deshamo and Kupka together. I mean, it's amazing. I, I've become, you know, Bruce talks about Team Deshamo, Team Kupka. I've just become massively Team Deshambo in this because, um, you know, Kupka can cannot start encouraging fans to start heckling um, players. You know, it, it, Kupka, I think, has uh, be, you know, lacked a bit of class lately. Um, I think it, I've been very unimpressive with Kupka's conduct. You know, we call him Brusque Brooks now. I don't, I don't know if you know me and Bruce are christening Brooks Brusque Brooks because he's so moody. And um, you know that, that tweet he did when he was saying, "I'll give a crate of beer to all the yeah. people heckling the show." That was about the nicest and most ebullient we've ever seen Brooks Cook. Yeah, normally. But, but, but didn't you didn't you look at that, Steve? Like that was a commercial deal. He's now somehow commercialising. It's like turning into boxing. It's unbelievable. It's absolutely outrageous. And uh, yeah, I thought Deshambo. Uh, I think it's unfair on Deshambo because I mean I, I've been worried about heckling of players I think will become a bigger and bigger issue because you know it talked about Lily Bet bookmakers taking over you know you know American betting industry is going through the roof all, all the Americans are suddenly betting normally and they're going to be going to these golf tournaments and they're loud enough as it is you know you, you put some betting betting vouchers in their pockets you know they could have a huge bearing on on events you know um so without needing Brooks Cooker firing up firing up the hecklers i think heckling could become a big problem anyway in um in, in, is that, in is that the just a is that just a different in cultures then because you know every everyone who's walking around you know sort of uk and ireland and european courses most of them will probably have a few quid on here and there but you don't really see it over here do you no 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 i mean they're very civilized crowds over here i mean we don't do get in the whole mashed potato etc where over there you know, they seem to get charged up on those um those Mitchellob ultras or whatever. They, oh, I've, done, I've done Brooks Cooper's job for him there. Um, and then, um, you yeah, know, they shout all sorts, don't they? But, you know, I have a genuine concern. I mean, you know, there could be a betting angle here in future. Uh, you know, the favourites may become better bets on the PGA Tour, you know, when, when the betting industry in America really takes off because, um, you know, all these, all these when, you know, when they get all the galleries in there, at the moment it's restricted crowds, you know, 10,000 people. When you get these these big events with the, the full whack of spectators and they've all piled into the, to the favourite and they're all heckling every other player, you know, you, 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 genuinely you may have an issue there of like the, you're factoring in the hecklers. Um, Absolutely. So yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. But yeah, yeah, Brooks Cook should be fined for uh, for that one. And uh, Bryson DeChambeau amazingly has become. Um, you know, I'm starting to protect my little my little Bryson there. Uh, I feel sorry for Bryson DeChambeau. I never thought that would happen. <laughs> you sound like a, a lovely protective father, Steve. There's, there's nothing <laughs> wrong with that. I, I can't wait to get back on the course. I think I'm going to try out the, the senior Oper down at, uh, at Sunningdale soon. I, I'm going to give that a whirl. Um, Steve, what are you up to this week before we before we go our separate ways? Uh, I just uh, yeah, getting my voice back to normal levels and then uh, yeah, preparing for the U.S. Open. You know, we've got to get get our research done on that and um, uh, maybe a, I think there's going to be a player guy for that 156 run a player guy. I haven't, I haven't haven't chatted to my big cheeses yet, but. Uh, no doubt the big cheeses will be whipping me into shape for that. Uh, it, 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 sounds like you're offering your, it sounds like you're offering your uh, your work again for that. <laughs> Just yeah, keep yeah, it quiet. Yeah, no. I know, I know, I know, I know. I think I'm going to have a, a difficult weekend there. But uh, now really looking forward to that event. Torrey Pines South US Open. It doesn't get much better than that. I mean, it breaks my heart that this fella's not going to be here. Um, you know, when you, when you, you look on... Um, like the, the Wikipedia page for the 2020 on US Open, they got Tiger Woods listing the field. And Tiger Woods is not expected to play, it says on there. I'm just thinking, for goodness sake, you know, not expected to play. I mean, Tiger Woods is not going to be playing, is he, Jack? Um, you know, and, and, you know, and a Tory Pines South US Open without Tiger Woods, I think we're going to have to have a little 
group hug before that, aren't we? Um, yeah, no, definitely. We, um, we, we can we can sort of collective sweet spot hug. Uh, maybe not a hug in COVID times, but a, a virtual <laughs> one. He, he might not be at the US Open, but he's in your work shed. He's in my work shed. He'll, he'll never leave it. And maybe Phil Mickelson might win the US Open and complete the career Grand Slam and then we'll have something else to... Yeah, another feel-good story that these punters are loving, these skint punters. <laughs> we shall see. Steve, thank you so much for joining me this week. Bruce will be back next week. I'm sure you're all very excited about that. To preview the aforementioned US Open with Steve, there will be comprehensive coverage, as always, on the golf throughout the week and next week on the Racing Post Sport website. Until then, stay safe, gamble responsibly, and we'll see you all again very soon. Bye-bye.